what about taking animals such as chickens to Mars? Like so many things, this sounds like a great idea, until you look into it a little. A small flock of chickens that's hatching out eggs can provide you with a steady stream of roosters to butcher, and provide excess eggs for you to eat as well. Chickens eat most manner of table scraps, or insects and plant material, and they do a wonderful job of fertilizing the ground they walk on, which works really well on Earth, where we actually have table scraps, insects, plant material, and ground to walk on with the assistance of gravity. But picture this. The colonists load up a small flock of chickens, let's say two dozen including 22 hens and two roosters, one rooster is a backup. A pen is created for them in the pressurized hold with bedding, food, and water. Everyone gets settled in and then the rocket takes off. And all of a sudden, nothing's touching the floor anymore. The hens are floating in the air along with their bedding, their food pellets, their water, and their poop. In fact, it would look like this actual footage of a chicken that was taken aboard the Mir space station. Humans going to space have to learn how to eat through a straw or spoon their food out of bags. Then they relieve themselves through a tube or into a vacuum powered commode. Good luck trying either of those with a chicken. And whether you've got all the birds in one cage together or in separate cubby holes, the effect's going to be the same. Free floating fowl and fowl floating feces. Yes, you could pen the birds in place, but then you'll have the birds you're planning on eventually butchering withering away as the effects of space eat at their muscles and bone. Now, since the birds will not likely be able to hatch out their eggs in space, based on experiments on the ISS and Mir using quail eggs that had limited success, in fact many of those failed embryos were headless, these chickens are pretty much going to be pets for the entire duration of the trip. Not only are they all going to be needed at the other end to propagate a larger flock, but good luck butchering a bird in the weightlessness of space. These birds will require water and food, and since there's not likely to be any table scraps left over from the pre-packed rations of the colonists, that means they will require additional food stores specifically for them. A flock of 24 birds can easily crush a 20 kilo bag of layer pellets in a single week, even when they're scratching for other scraps and bugs in the yard. They also require grit for digestion and oyster shell for producing eggs. To cut down on oyster shells, you can feed them back their own eggshells but colonists will also require a source of calcium, and crushed dehydrated eggshells work well for that purpose. But the hens won't likely be laying eggs while en route to their new home. Only one egg has ever been laid in space. That was a quail hen that was on its way to Mir, holding that honor, but once aboard the Russian space station, she stopped producing altogether. Adding up requirements for a six month journey, assuming fresh supplies await on Mars, the colonists would have to pack up around four tons of food, plus grit, plus oyster shells to keep these birds minimally fed. Then there's water, and the fact that birds don't pee per se. With humans, our bodies separate liquids from solids, even though human poop does hold a lot of water. But with birds, everything they excrete comes out the same hole in a pasty mixture of nitrogenous waste and uric acid. It looks kind of like these dog treats. No, we didn't actually post pictures of poop. This mixture is not particularly water soluble either, so all the water going through the bird will not be able to be recaptured or recycled. How much water? Well, an adult chicken will go through around a liter of fresh water per day, 30 liters per month. So this flock of 24 birds will go through about four and a half tons of water while en route, and also require a steady flow of fresh water once they arrive at Mars. Not only is that water lost in their waste, but now the colonists will have to deal with that waste some other way. If you feed the birds four tons of food, you're going to have to expect about four tons of poop, give or take. In this environment of waste not want not, most likely they would want to store this byproduct as possible fertilizer once they arrive on Mars. Here's the problem with that though. As their droppings dry out, they expel methane, which is the same explosive gas used to fuel the rockets, but would definitely not be refined enough or cold enough to be inserted into the cryogenic propellant tank. In landfills, the flame stack you often see burning is the dirty methane being released from buried trash. Some landfills have started recapturing this methane to insert into natural gas utilities. But the facilities required for that refinement are massive and energy intensive, far too large to be built into a starship. The poop also releases ammonia, which is a sharp, pungent, eye-watering stench that would also need to be recaptured and stored, since this compound contains one of the elements Mars desperately needs more of which is nitrogen. Similar logistics would surround the transportation of pigs or cows or whichever other animal colonists intend to bring along. 
animals floating around the ship that need to be fed, watered, and cleaned up after. That will likely provide you with no benefit while en route. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic. Feel free to add your unanswered questions about Starship or Mars colonization in the comments below so we can consider including them in upcoming episodes. Visit our discussion panels on Instagram, Reddit, and Facebook, as well as our YouTube community page. Give the video a thumbs up, share the video, and hit subscribe so you'll be the first to know when The Common Sense Skeptic returns.